Chicago Bulls are easily one of the worst ran franchises in the NBA. Here we are at the trading deadline, and you would assume that a team that has been underwhelming for two seasons in a row with a bunch of expiring contracts on their roster and a bunch of rumors circulating around practically everybody on the team that they will finally blow it up and move in a different direction. But oh! No, 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 no. Another trade deadline coming goes, and the Chicago Bulls decide to do nothing. Not a thing. Not a zilch. Actually, chat, I want to see. So I want y'all to see when the last time the Chicago Bulls have made a trade. I, I need y'all to really understand when they have. It's crazy. It's it's insane. Uh, they didn't do anything this year. Let's go into previous year, you know. So July, August, October, February, they signed Pat Bev. Okay. Okay, so no trade. So this is that's two years. Okay, we go back in 2022 at a didn't trade. Okay, uh, they traded Daniel Daniel Tice to the Houston Rockets for cash. Okay, okay, okay. They they traded Sanaransky and Girl Temple and cash for Lonzo. 2021. Okay, another 2021 pick. Okay, so 20 so 2021 is the last time that this team has had a pulse when it came to trades. 2021. So Chicago, let's 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 let I'm gonna break, let me break it down to y'all so y'all understand how dumb this is right quick. So the Chicago Bulls last season losing record. Matt, Matt, let's let's go back a little bit further actually. Let's go back to the Jim Boylan years. This is the organization cuz this is this is this miraculous here. Had Jimmy Butler on their roster. Jimmy wanted to stay. They said, "No, we pick Fred Hoiberg over you." Traded this man for Zach Levine. Then they said, "Hey, we're going to get rid of Hoiberg, brought in Jim Boylan for a year because that was a mess. Then they said, hey, Zach, I know you about to leave us because you're on an expiring contract, the contract coming up. You know what we're going to do? We're going to build, what is what is it? What was it, a big three? What did y'all call it? Not not a big three, a mid three. We're going to build a mid three around you with DeMar DeRozan and Vujovic. In the process of building that mid three, we're going to give up draft capital to do so. That mid three, alongside with quality pickups of Lonzo Ball and Alex Caruso and, and, and actually drafting fit fairly well in some of those years and, and Kobe White and Io came in as well right that mid three best that they have done is a 46 and 36 record first round exit I don't know about y'all I know about me I did not need to see that mid three get pieced together to know that the ceiling was a first round exit because if DeMar DeRozan especially at this stage of his career is leading your franchise in any capacity first second round exit now of course Alonzo Ball injury that that definitely didn't help Zach Levine injured this year that that certainly doesn't help but since then last year they had a record of 40 and 42 and here we are now the deadline and they're below 500 once more Let's put in things into further context here. Not only is this team below 500, DeMar DeRozan is on an expiring contract. Y'all gave him a contract extension earlier. He said no. He's on an expiring contract. Pat Williams, you got to pay him as well. Lonzo next year will be on an expiring because he's going to opt in. And then uh, Caruso only has one more year left in his deal. And Andre Drummond is also an expiring. This is the makeup of a team where you dismantle it. You blow it up. You move forward because that makes the most sense. You had the same option last season because Vucevic was on the expiring last season. You know what you did? You gave him a contract extension. For what? You attempted to give DeMar DeRozan a contract extension. He said, mm, no, I want more money. On. So if he wants more and you're here, why not trade him for literally anything? Because either one or two things are going to happen. Either A, he's going to walk in free agency for nothing, or B, you're going to sign him to more money that you originally were not willing to sign him to. But since this is in there, getting a second round pick would have been better than doing what y'all about to do. You already see what this team looks like. Oh, yeah, Nick. Y'all said Alex Caruso was untouchable. How? How is he untouchable? How? How is it that a man that is on, like, this is by far, no cap, dead ass serious. This is by far the most valuable that Alex Caruso will ever be under this contract. Because next year, he's on expiring. So you're going to get even less than that. How is it How is it possible that he's untouchable? That's a touchable nigga. If any nigga is touchable, it's him. He has the most value on the team. Almost any contender would love to have Alex Caruso on their roster. How is that? 
nigga untouchable. We will continue being aggressive in our efforts to make sure that this team is better. We will not settle for mediocrity here. So what do you call it? What do you call this? What what do you call like that ass? Like what do what do you call 24 and 27? What do you call that? What do you call what do you call these years? What do you call it? Does he know? I don't think he does. You've been the pinnacle of mediocrity. The definition of it. When I open up the dictionary and I look at it, your face is there. That's it. So when we sit here and talk about mediocrity, it's you. Look in the mirror. You'll see it. Go outside. They'll tell you about it. The rest of the league is laughing at you because that's what you are. You're mediocre. Nothing more, nothing less. First round exit ceiling. That's it. Nigga said relax. Tell these niggas to make a trade. <laughs>